So my first videos on electrochemistry, the ones most likely below this on the website, are not the best of videos. So I feel as though I need to go back and redeem myself. And so electrochemistry is getting a little bit of an overhaul. While the videos I did post are OK, I would like to make up for it now. So this unit is on electrochemistry, which is the study of the interchange of chemical and electrical energy. And it's all based off of redox reactions. Remember that oxidation is a loss of electrons, and therefore something's going to increase in charge. And reduction is a gain of electrons, and therefore it will reduce in charge. In electrochemistry, there are two types of cells. A galvanic, also known as a voltic cell, is what you know as a battery. All batteries are spontaneous. And this means they proceed on their own without any external power source. Batteries also allow us to do work, either produce heat or to power a light bulb, by allowing us to capture the electron flow from one species to another. Where does that electron flow come from? Well, it comes from one of the species being oxidized and the other one being reduced. Now, generally, when you have two species, if they collide, ba-bam, that's when there's an exchange of electrons and they change their oxidation state, their charges change. And we don't actually observe, we don't actually are able to capture that change of electrons. It's simply when they collide that it actually happens. In electrochemistry, if we want to capture that change of electrons, we have to separate the two species. So in order to do that, we put them into separate cells called half cells. In each cell, we put an electrode attached to a wire. This wire and electrode allow the electrons to flow through them between each species. At one wire, oxidation will occur. Sorry, at one electrode, oxidation will occur. And that is called the anode. If, if the anode cell contains a, a metal, that metal may appear to be dissolving as it goes from having an oxidation state of zero to having an oxidation state of being an ion, being positive. So the anode may lose mass and therefore may appear to dissolve. Oxidation occurs at the, an at the anode. Reduction occurs at the cathode. And the cathode may appear to rust. This is because it's increasing in mass as the metal plates onto uh, the metal cathode. If you're dealing with two ions changing, then you would want to pick an inert cat uh, electrode such as graphite or platinum. So here we have a galvanic cell where permanganate is undergoing a redox reaction and so is iron too. So let's start by breaking this into the two half reactions that are occurring. So we have permanganate becoming the magnesium ion. We have ferric becoming ferrous sorry, ferrous becoming ferric, iron. Let's start by balancing the oxygens in the first, uh, in the first half reaction. Since we've introduced hydrogens, now we have to balance the hydrogens on the opposite side. And lastly, let's balance out the charge. I've got plus eight on this side, minus one. I have plus seven on this side. On this side I have plus two, so I'm going to need to take this side down by five, so I'm going to add five electrons. Down below we have plus two, we've got plus three, so all I need to do is take that charge down by one to get plus two on both sides. And there we go. Uh, we want these electrons to cancel out, so I'm going to need to multiply the iron half reaction by five. And now we can see the electrons cancel out, and we're left with this overall reaction. So these are our two half reactions. I see that the, mag the, mag the magnesium is being reduced, going from plus 7 to 2 plus. 
So since it's being reduced, that means that it's my cathode, and that leaves iron as my anode. One other thing I might want to do, make a little, this is my recommendation to you, anytime you see one of these, is to make a note to yourself how many electrons are being transferred, and just write it as N equals, and the number of electrons. And that's not something you'll necessarily need right now, but you may eventually need it, and by may I mean you definitely will, uh, a couple videos from now. Now this picture is missing something very important, in the fact that as the electrons move, from the iron, as the iron loses electrons, they travel through the wire to uh, the permagnemate, which becomes magnesium ions. Electrons always flow from anode to cathode. However, as they flow through this wire towards the cathode, there's eventually going to be a buildup of a negative charge. And no matter what the, electron, what the electron potential is, no matter how much they, there's a pull for those electrons to go from the iron to uh, the permagnemate, it is eventually going to slow down or stop because there's a buildup of a negative charge here. Electrons don't want to go towards something that's negative. So this cell, this diagram, is actually only going to work for a short amount of time. So we need something to balance out the charge. And we have something like that in the form of a salt bridge. A salt bridge is a U-shaped piece of glassware filled with auger and some neutral salt, like potassium uh, iodine. Sorry, potassium nitrate. We pick potassium nitrate usually because it is extremely soluble and it's going to be soluble with anything else that it's paired with. So there won't be any precipitate coming from the salt bridge itself. Salt bridges can also be replaced with porous disks that function the same way, allowing, electron, allowing the charge to balance out. However, we're going to stick with salt bridges, but don't be thrown if you ever see a diagram like the one in your notes or right here with a porous disk. So here we have the same diagram with our iron and our permagnemate uh, half cells separated with a salt bridge of potassium nitrate. The moment these two inert electrodes, because they have to be inert since we're de dealing with two ions being formed, we have the formation of the ferric ion, formation of the magnesium ion. So we had to pick an inert electrode. So we're going to say this is a graphite electrode. The moment those two touch the solution and there's a connection, electrons can begin to flow from the iron uh, two ions, the ferrous ions, can start becoming ferric ions. And when they give up their electrons, they're going to start replacing these permagnemate ions with magnesium ions. Now in order to balance out the charge of these ions being formed over here, these cations being formed over here, and these over here, the salt bridge is going to start releasing its ions into the solutions. Since electrons are flowing from the anode, that means the anion is going to start filling in over here. Electrons are flowing into the cathode. So the cations are going to start filling it in uh, over there. We can measure the cell potential or predict the cell potential if we know what ions are being formed from what ions or what our, two, our anode and cathode is. Cell potential is a measure of electro 
motive force. It's a pull of electrons as they travel from the anode to the cathode. And it's measured in volts. So if we were to put a voltmeter on the wire between the anode and the cathode, it would register the amount of volts or the amount of joules per coulomb of charge transferred passing through the wire.